Kenny Roberts with the Yamaha's in the lead, but Spencer is challenging on the inside. Freddie Spencer was fast. So fast that he won three world championships. How did he do it? Was there a secret behind his success? Freddie Spencer revolutionized motorcycle racing by creating his own unique riding style. While most riders were still trying to get the hang of their motorcycles, he was already taking part in motorcycle races. His dad would have to keep a hold of him at the start of races because his legs were too short and he couldn't reach the ground, leaving him with no choice but to use his whole body weight to maneuver the bike. As he got older and his body was physically capable of handling the bike, he realized that using his entire body weight to maneuver the bike had prepared him for the corners and everything else. He was more fluid as he didn't have to use only his arm strength to handle the bike. He was able to use his body weight, which increased his endurance in every race. Freddy understood the assignment, and from the start, he didn't question whether he would do better if he had different kinds of equipment, or a different bike or anything for that matter. He put all his faith in himself and his bike. He didn't think that having better equipment would make him better. In fact, he thought of it as a hindrance, because as he rose and faced rivals who had the fastest bikes, he noticed that they would progress better in the start, and all eyes would be on them, with the expectation that they would win the championships. But they never did. As soon as they got their hands on bigger machines, they would fall off more times than not, because they over-relied on the equipment. They didn't gain any advantage and in the end took second or third place. Freddy observed his greatest rivals and picked pointers that he would apply in his next races, making him a thinking racer. And obviously as he got older and got his hands on bigger and more complicated machines as factory teams were looking to sign him, he didn't need to have the best equipment. He'd already found ways to outperform the other racers and win before that, and it stood by him. Beginning his races from an early age helped him a lot because he grew up with machines more than most kids. He learned to master his fear and speed at a young age and developed most of his techniques. Freddy's approach has always been to prepare beforehand and win the races the slowest way possible, which would be surprising for most people. It's not that he didn't want to go fast. Freddy loved speed, just as anyone would expect. But by taking things slow, he would make fewer mistakes and wouldn't need to work as hard on the dirt tracks. He mastered the machine not through physical strength, as most racers rely on to a certain extent, but by using his brain. He found a way to use his body weight to control the bike, which led to the unique Freddy Spencer racing style. The dirt tracks were always changing from race to race, and how fast a racer would adapt to the changes would be the difference between losing and winning. Freddy put in his best work to master throttle control, knew the limits of his machine, his own ability, and what his machine did as he raced and took it to the edge. From his perspective, not changing your way of positioning is what got most racers in trouble, because the moment the throttle was applied, shifting weight was inevitable to keep the machine from lifting up, and body weight would counteract that lift and keep the bike down while navigating a corner. Putting less weight on his feet did the trick for Freddy. Basically, for Freddy's riding style, rather than fighting with his machine to keep it under control, he worked with it. He combined body position, throttle control, and weight transfer to steer the machine. He didn't remain still all the way through the corner, and he transferred his body weight to get a little throttle and maximize his speed as he exited the corner. Freddy also learned and believes that psychological games, even in today's races, have an influence over what way a rider reacts. On practice days when he was training, lots of riders would cut each other off the track and play other mind game tactics to intimidate you. He didn't let that deter him in any way whatsoever. One more thing that made Freddie Spencer a master of speed and winning was his ability to slide the bike, which he learned from his dirt track days. That being said, though a new challenge awaited him, using that same technique on the tarmac. Freddie had to refine his technique, and he started by lifting himself on corners to get a better view of what was in front of him and aiming his bike. By preparing early and finding out what he needed to do through years and years of development through the competition, it became very natural for him, and it never created much of a problem. Even before he knew it, his body was already doing what needed to be done, like a reflex. His objective was to always make it in and out of the corner faster than everybody else. Motorcycle racing has its risks, and Freddy took this seriously. Doing crazy things on the track may have helped, but the risks were just not worth it. Safety was a priority for Freddy, and obviously he had to wear his racing helmet on race days, but even if he was just practicing, he'd make sure to have it on. Freddy pointed out that a race has a start, middle, and end, and every part is always different because the more laps the bike takes, the more the tire performance drops. Freddy learned to adapt to the changes as they happened. He timed and made the right moves at the right time to overtake his rivals. 
and it worked out great on many occasions. Here's a little look at his racing career. Born in Louisiana and from the young age of four, Freddie was already a master of the races, taking part in dirt track racing events close to his home. After claiming the first year professionals US championship in 1978 for the 250cc class, he got a contract to ride with a Honda team, where he took part in the AMA Superbike Championship. He handed Honda its first victory in the Superbike Championship in the Road America round of the 1980 AMA Superbike Championship. Freddy gained international recognition at the Britain vs. US Transatlantic Trophy in 1980 match races, where he was victorious in two of the brand's hatch legs, beating Barry Sheen and Kenny Roberts. In the end, he finished third at the Superbike Championships that year, and in 1981, he was second place behind Eddie Lawson. In 1981, he had divided his time to take part in both the AMA Superbike races and European Grand Prix to help Honda develop their NR500 bike for the Grand Prix, an oval cylinder, five-stroke machine. Freddy was a full-time Honda rider in 1982 for the Grand Prix. By that time, they'd lost all hope that they had for the NR500, and then moved to develop the two-stroke three-cylinder NS500. He claimed his first world championship title in the 500cc class in 1983, when he was 21, to become the youngest person to have ever claimed the title, which had previously been won by Mike Halewood. Marc Marquez later surpassed Freddy's record in 2013. The season of 1983 turned out to be a very dramatic competition for the title in Grand Prix racing history, with Freddie Spencer still with Honda and Kenny Roberts furiously battling for the lead as they claimed six victories each. At the penultimate round, they collided in the final lap in Sweden, pushing Kenny off track as Freddie raced forward to claim victory. Kenny took the final race, but Freddie came in second and by two points, he grabbed his first world title. Honda came up with the V4 NSR500 in 1984. The bike's fuel tank was placed below the engine, while the expansion chambers were in a fake tank on top of the engine. Freddy faced a lot of injuries and complications with the machine, preventing him from defending his title. He finished the championship in fourth place. Even with all the troubles, he still had three victories on the NSR500, then two more on the NS500. 1985 was Freddy's historic year. He kicked off the season with a victory at the Daytona 200 opening season. He was also victorious at the 250cc class Formula 1 to make him the only racer who had been victorious in all three categories in the same year. He also took part in the 500cc and 250cc Grand Prix championships and claimed both titles that year, making him the fifth and final rider who ever claimed a 500cc class victory and another one below it due to changes on the classes and also the only rider to have ever won in both categories in the same year. Freddie's career came to an abrupt end because of injuries to his wrist that some people believed were due to the strain he put on himself while taking part in two championships in one season. After making history in 1985, Freddy never had another Grand Prix victory. At the start of 1988, he called it quits on his Grand Prix racing career, but he did make some GP comebacks in 1989 and then later in 1993. After his retirement, Freddy didn't quit completely. In the 1990s, he came back to the AMA Superbike Championship and won three races. He finished eighth place in 1991 with a Honda while riding for Two Brothers Racing. All in all, Freddy raced under a couple of different manufacturers throughout his career and took his first win for the Superbike World Championship while riding for Kawasaki, though he was more associated with Earth, Kanemoto and Honda. All his three world titles were with Hondas and Kanemoto as the head mechanic. He interacted with the Yamaha for a while and then finished off his career on a Ducati at the National Championship in the US. He ran a motorbike riding school for a couple of years, which he named Freddie Spencer's High Performance Riding School. The school was closed in 2008, and from the start, it had been based in Nevada. Freddie became the FIM MotoGP Stewards Panel Chairman after he was appointed in 2019. What do you think about Freddie's riding style? Was it really unique, or had someone else done it before him? 